All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty of a NEMA 2000 wiring harness system, backbone system, gauge malfunction, C10 issues. So what I've done is I've taken out the power, taken out my fuses for my backbone NEMA 2000. And um, at each backbone, at the end of each backbone, you have these little resistors. And these resistors, there needs to be uh, 120 ohm resistance for the thing to work. So to do that, this one here has a two pin. So it's pretty easy to check that one. Put one uh, lead on one pin, one on the other. And if I got 119.98 resistance on my ohms, which means this is a perfect resistor. So this resistor is good. I checked the resistor on the other end. And now I need to check the resistance of my backbone. This whole thing is, is, your, is your NEMA 2000 backbone. I got a cheater wire and I cut it open and uh, the blue and white is your resistance and your red and black is your power and this one that I peeled back is your ground and your sheath covering so I should have 120 to 119 across all these by checking this and if I don't then I have something wrong with one of my devices that's keeping the whole thing from working so I'll show you what I did and how I'm gonna check that see again I got my cheater cable in it's not really a cheater cable it's just it's the only way to do this because these pins are so small so I got my blue and my white those are my resistors you need to have 120 to 119 resistance I have 129 ohms resistance so that tells me that one of these things is not working properly one of these things are are bad so it's a 128 separated my backbone this back this part of the backbone has power supplied all the time this part of the backbone has that inline resistor switch key meter or your uh your gauge your power key when you turn your power key it hits power to here powers up your gauge this only has three pins so the power doesn't feed back so I'm going ahead and own that and you're looking for a 120 to see if all that stuff's good so uh, let's own that 120 so that means that this side of the house is good all right so I'm going to disconnect my my test line So I know this is good, this part. I'm gonna hook my test line to these four T's here. Oh, wrong side, <laughs> my bad. Okay. And you just screw them on. But you wanna make sure it's nice and tight. And I'm going to have to put an inline resistor on this one as well to read. So here's my resistor. I already checked this out. It's at 120 ohms. So I'm putting that in there. Okay, let's see if I got one two three four ports and really what i'm looking for is not 120 ohms i'm looking for one of these ports to be bad hundred twenty five so something in there is bad because it's got it can't go over 120 so i got a bad port in here somewhere okay so what I'm going to do is start taking these ports apart one at a time and find out which one of these is bad.
and that could be the whole problem I'm having with my gauge. All right, more to come. See, out. Set that one right there. Check these three with the ohm resistor. And I hope it's 120. If not, then it's got to be another one. 123. So it's still something's wrong. Okay, take out one more. I'm going to take this one out. And to do that, you just got to loosen these connectors. Oh, that one's really stuck. So uh, that might be the problem. That one there. Okay, more to come. Let me get, I got to get a pair of pliers. I think I got this one here. It's probably a bad one. I put this in the system. And I get 125 ohms. Take it out of the system. And I got 120 ohms. I don't know if you all can see that or not. I don't know why that is. There we go. Okay, put that back in the system. 120. If I put this one in, I go to 125. So something's gone, something's wrong with it here. It's probably corroded somewhere. It's got some corrosion up here. I don't know what's wrong with this one. So I'm going to take it out of the system. I'm going to go ahead and plug in. I'm going to plug in my second half and see what I got there. All right, pull out. For all this watching me, I've got my fuel sensor, my power engine, my key switch, and my C10 gauge, which I don't know if it works or not, because it wasn't working before. Uh, this is the one I took apart and I um, cleaned out the pins and, and put it back together. I didn't hook it back. I didn't secure it yet because I got I to put in the fuses. I got an inline fuse that goes to the terminal board and I got a fuse for the switch leg. And those are your two power things. So I'm going to put those in. And then if it works, I'm going to secure it back and uh, call it a day and have a little celebration. All right, cross your fingers. Suzuki C10 gauge. It's one that's been messed up. You saw my last video, I took it apart, cleaned out the pins. So here's the key. It should turn on with the start button, or start, or switch on on, and it turns on. So I got the power thing in the right direction. So that's on. Let's see if it reads anything. If it does, I'd be surprised as I'll get out. So don't hold your breath. I know I'm not. I'm not holding my breath. Takes a minute to turn on. It's not reading anything yet. It's still not reading anything. So I'm gonna go to the menu, go to settings, and see if I can do anything. I don't think, I think there's just something else wrong with this uh, gauge. I'm gonna go check out the networks. Source. Everything's there. GPS, vessel, sonar, and engine. So that's a good sign that that's all there. It didn't, that didn't show up last. These sonar in this engine didn't show up last time. Okay. So, network, device list, C10's there. Network, diagnostic. Last time the bus was off. Here it says the bus is on. <clears throat> Gotta look real close. Bus load is 0% right now, which is kind of not good. I mean, I should have some kind of uh, load on this bus. But it says the bus is on. Hmm. And I got nothing. So although everything's there, this meter is not reading it. Now the other thing I can check, and, and I did check this last time, was the go to system, simulate, see, and that's what it's supposed to look like. So the simulation, I mean, that stuff's working. So I just got to figure out why reading i mean this is all in simulated mode so it's not like it's working it's just this is what it's supposed to do that's what it's supposed to look like 
fuel used fuel I mean it's I mean that's what it used to look like when it ran so I have no idea um, let me try one more thing here system take the simulate off okay restore def defaults I put all settings hit ok restore all settings and unit will restart ok Let's see if that works. Again, I'd be surprised. Oh, English. Okay. That's all that matters. That doesn't matter. Miles. Good. Fuel capacity. I got to set that to. Six uh -huh. because I got a 60 gallon tank. Hit OK. It's got a center console, engine number one. Center. That's OK. No fuel's been added. Gauge is not working. Well, that was totally uh, messed up. Now I'm going to try to hook it up to my Lowrance and uh, see if I can bring my gauges on my Lowrance without having to do a, uh, a different cable for that. I mean, really, I've got everything hooked up to the NEMA 2000. So if I hooked my Lowrance up, I would think that that would read on my gauges. So I'm going to try that and see what happens. More to come. As you can see, I'm a little depressed. Okay, I'm going to end this video saying that I've got everything back to normal except for the gauge. The uh, C10 gauge is just, it's just junk. I mean, I got it to work, got it to turn on, but it's not reading anything. So uh, there's probably some corrosion on that circuit board, I'm sure. But I installed my, my backbone for my NEMA 2000, I installed that back so it's nice and sturdy, nothing will be wiggling. I'm going to disconnect this gauge that don't work anymore. Get that out of the system. And then uh, this is my uh, fuel gauge. Put that back in. The problem I have after doing some more research is I need to get myself a Suzuki interface cable. 3.54 as I think I need. The one I have on this one right now is a 3.50. I don't know if you can see that or not. 3.50. I need a 3.54. So that's what it says on my Lorentz guide is that I need a 3.54 interface to interface with my engine so i'm assuming that's what i need i'll buy that next week or so but thanks for watching um hope i talked to you about the nema 2000 backbone and how to troubleshoot good luck with yours uh more to come online pull out